What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to attempt to predict stock prices using FB Profit, which is an open source procedure provided by Meta, by Facebook essentially. Um, and it's something that you can use to forecast, to predict time series data without understanding what is happening behind the scenes. So let us get right into it. All right, now before we get into the actual coding, I wanna mention that none of this is financial advice. This video is a programming exercise. This video shows you how to do certain things in Python that are related to finance, but nothing here is financial advice, investing advice, or anything like that. I'm not a financial professional. I'm just a programmer, a computer scientist, showing you how to do things here. So I'm not responsible for any actions that you take. Uh, just because you think that you can now predict stock prices, this is probably not the case. I'm just showing you something that you can do in Python here. So having said that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to install the FB Profit Python module. And for this, I'm going to use the Google Call-Up environment in today's video. So I'm not gonna do this locally because it produces quite some problems on my machine. Um, probably because I'm running Windows maybe, um, but it works perfectly on Google Call-Up, on, um, in the Jupyter Notebooks on Google Call-Up. And for those of you who don't know what Google Call-Up is, it's essentially an environment provided by Google where you get resources like RAM, CPU power, GPU power, sometimes even TPU power, um, and you can just run Python notebooks. So you can just do data science work, machine learning work with Google's resources online in the cloud. And this is what we're going to use in today's video. I also have a video about Google call up on this channel if you wanna know more, but um, that's it. Now you can do it also locally. You can feel free to do whatever you want. I'm just gonna use Google call up. And the first thing you wanna do here is you want to install um, FB Profit, but you also want to install one of the, the modules that FB Profit is based on separately because FB Profit is based on PyStan. And the problem is that when you install PyStan, it will install the most recent version. It will install PyStan 3. Point something, or maybe by the time you're watching this, 4. Point something, I don't know. Um, and PyStan changed the way it is being imported. I think it changed from, from PyStan to Stan or something, and FB Profit did not update that yet. So it still imports just PyStan or the older, the, the older name of the module, whatever it is. And for that reason, we need to install a specific version of PyStan that is not three point something, but that is still two point something. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, pip install, and we're going to say PyStan, and then wave equals 2.14. Now this operator basically means that we're installing 2.14 or higher, as long as we stay in 2 point something. So if we have a version 2.17, it's going to install 2.17. If we have a version 3.4, it's not gonna install 3.4. So it's gonna go 2.14 or higher, but only as long as we stay in 2 point X. So that's the idea behind that command. I think this should al already be installed on this system here. Um, and then I'm also going to say pip install FB profit. That is that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to predict, we're going to try to predict, um, stock prices. And for this video, you can use any data that you want. You can use uh, Tesla stock price, Apple stock price. You can even use something that's not related to stock prices at all. You can use any time series data where you have dates and you have values. So if you have dates and some value to predict, that is a value that changes over time, um, you can use FB profit for that. So if you want to predict, I don't know, avocado prices, or you want to predict housing prices, uh, or sea levels in certain regions, whatever, feel free to do that. I'm going to do this with stock prices. And also it doesn't really matter how you get the data. I'm going to get it through the Pandas data reader. I'm going to download the data from the Yahoo Finance API uh, using Python. You can also just load a CSV file that you already have. You can download it from online. You can create data, whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to use the Pandas data reader. And since the Pandas data reader doesn't work with a request from the Google Call-Up environment, I'm going to do this first locally and then upload the CSV file to the Google Call-Up environment. Of course, if you're doing all of this locally, you don't have to do any of that. You can just uh, download the data and work with it right away. So I'm going to say here, import Pandas underscore data reader. And if you want to do the same thing and you don't have the Pandas data reader installed, you need to open up your command line. You need to type pip install pandas dash data reader like this and then you import this as web 
So then we're going to say data equals web dot data reader. And I'm going to just get for this video, the Apple stock price, or maybe let's go with a Tesla stock price um, from the Yahoo Finance API. And we're going to also specify a time frame. So we're going to say import date time as DT. And I'm going to say start equals DT dot date time from 2020 first of January, and the end is going to be DT date time now. So up until the present point, and this data will then be exported to a CSV file. And we're going to call this stock underscore data dot CSV. So I'm going to run all of this. This will produce hopefully a CSV file. There you go. This is the file date high, low, open, close volume adjusted close price. Uh, we're going to take that now and just drag and drop it into Google Colab. So I'm going to open this in the Explorer. Um, there you go, we have it here. And now I'm going to go back into the Google Colab environment. Uh, this failed, there you go. Here into the folder, you can see also already a file that I used for the preparation of this video, I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to take the file and just drag and drop it here into Google Colab. So once we have that file here, we can just import it, we can just load it using panda. So I'm going to say now, uh, in a new cell down here, from or actually not from import pandas, as PD, and then I'm going to say that the data is going to be equal to PD, read CSV, stock underscore data dot CSV. And then I can show the data and you can see that we have this data frame here with date high, low, open, close. I think I forgot to add the start and end date here. Let's rerun the whole process. There you go. Let's go back here. Let's go to this. Let's drag and drop it here again. Not sure if it's updating the file or if it's doing nothing. So let me upload it here again. There you go. Load it again print it again. And then you can see now it goes from 2020 second of January, probably because the first of January is uh, not a trading day. And it goes up until today, 12th of October 2022. And we have the values here in the columns. And now what we need to do is we need to pick one of those values that we want to predict you can, we cannot predict every, anything here, uh, everything here, sorry. So we cannot predict high, low, open, close volume, adjusted close at the same time, we have to pick one value that we want to predict, so that we end up with the dates and with that value uh, in two series, uh, series. So we want to have a data frame with two columns, one being the date and one being the value that we want to predict. And for this, we're just going to go with a close price. So we're going to say data equals data. And we're going to focus on date and on close. So we have this now we can also print this. And one thing that we also need to change now is the column name. So FB profit is going to look for a column called DS probably for dates and one column called Y for the Y values. So date and close need to be renamed to we're going to say data dot columns, it's going to be equal to DS and Y. There you go. And now if I print not dad, but data, we're going to see that we have these two columns here. Alright, so what we need to do now, and this is quite simple, all we need to do is we need to import the F, uh, FB profit, the Facebook profit, we need to pass the data frame, we need to train and we need to make predictions. And that's it. I also have a video on this channel where I show you how to do stock price predictions manually by training a neural network by training. I also have videos on algorithmic trading and predicting uh, stock prices with all sorts of measures. This video is a video where we learn how to do it without understanding anything. So we just load FB profit and we say fit and it's done. It, it does the predictions by calling the predict method, we don't need to do anything, we don't need, need to understand what's happening. Um, this is the difference between FB profit and doing it manually. So we're going to say now from FB profit, import profit with a capital P. And we're going to create a new profit object by saying profit equals profit with a capital P. And we're going to say that the daily seasonality keyword argument is going to be true because we have daily uh, values, even though we don't have every day filled up with a value, we have a 
daily schedule. We have uh, second, third, then sixth, seventh, eighth. So we have the data uh, structured in days, not hours or months. Um, and then we're going to say profit.fit data. And that's basically all we need to do for the training. Everything happens behind the scenes. We don't need to understand anything. And now we can go ahead and make predictions. So I can go ahead now and I, I can say future underscore dates are going to be equal to profit, which is our model or our profit um, dot make future data frame. And we're going to say periods equals 365, which is one year. Um, and we're going to say then that the predictions are going to be equal to profit predict um, future dates. And then we can easily visualize that to see uh, what the result looks like by just saying from FB profits dot plot import plot underscore plotly. And then we can just say plot underscore plotly profit and the predictions. So I can run this and this is the result. Let me zoom out here. You can see the blue thing is the prediction and the black dots are the actual price. So based on the data the model was trained, this is what it predicted for the res uh, for the respective um, time frames, or this is what the model predicts now with the training data. Of course, this is going to be kind of accurate when it already knows the data. And this is the prediction for the future. So this is what the model expects to happen in the upcoming days. So we can look at that in the future and see if the model was right or not. But this is what it predicts. Now, we can also go ahead now and try to predict data that we already know the results for. So here we now predict the future. So you can see all these dates here are 2023 and so on in the future. Uh, we don't really know what the results are. However, we can try to predict, we, we can try to do the same thing. But we can say, okay, instead of predicting all the way or instead of showing the model, instead of showing FB profit, all these black values, let's just show, show the values up until here, for example, and then ask it to predict up until this point and see if it's correct or not. Uh, this can be quite interesting. So this is what we're going to do now, we're going to just take part of the data. And we're going to do um, we're going to do uh, the same thing, but we're now going to know what the actual results are. And we're going to compare them uh, to the model, we're going to compare them to the predictions to see if that makes sense or not. So we can say here that the data that we have, um, actually, let's do it the other way around, we're going to say that we have unknown data. And the unknown data is going to be the data. But I'm going to say I lock. And we're going to say negative um, 90 until the end. So we're going to go 90 days, the last 90 days are not going to be part of the data, we're going to not know the data, we're not going to show this data to the model, we're going to train it on all but the last 90 days. Um, and then we're going to see if we can predict the 90 days with some accuracy. So we're going to say data equals data I lock uh, up until negative 90. <clears throat> And then we're going to say now a new profit is going to be equal to profit. Daily seasonality is going to be equal to true profit dot fit data. Again, the data is now not the complete data, but only up until the um, so we exclude basically the last 90 days. Uh, and then we say now future dates we're going to say profit dot make predictions. Uh, was it make predictions or make prediction days make sorry, none of those make future data frames. This is why you always need to have prepared code when making a tutorial, no matter how often you do something, you always have to look up the names of the functions in the parameters. Um, and the periods are going to be in this case, uh, I think if we go with 90 days, it's not going to skip all the holidays and Saturdays and Sundays and all that. So let's just go with let's just go with 365 again. So that is that uh, we get the future dates and we don't want to have this in parentheses, I actually want to assign that. Um, and then we want to say the predictions are going to be equal to profit, profits, 
uh, predict. I'm confused now. Uh, Profit.predict, and we're going to predict on the future dates again. Basically, the same thing that we did before. And now we're going to plot this. Um, what's the problem here? Make future data frames. Profit, make future data frames. Make future data frame. There you go. And we can actually do the same visualization now, I think. So we can go with that as well. But I would like to actually plot the values. I mean, let's see if it's necessary. Um, where are we right now? So we can see here, this is July, or this is May 24th. There you go, June 3rd or something, we have the values here, and then we can see the future values being predicted. Now we can also compare just with the chart above here. So uh, this chart ends somewhere here. And this is the actual data. And here it predicts, I think something else. But in order to clearly see what the predictions uh, look like compared to reality, we can actually go ahead and do this in matplotlib. Uh, so we need to import matplotlib and we can go and say, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, plt figure 12.8. Figure size 12.8 as a tuple here. And we're going to say that we're going to plot. Actually, we need to plot on the same dates, I guess. So we're going to say now that the prediction prets is going to be equal, or let's say pret is going to be equal predictions, predictions the date. So the, the problem that we have here is that we have only certain days where trading is happening. So we have to have the same date values for the actual values and for the predicted dates. And when we say periods equals 365, it's not going to know, okay, this is a Sunday. So no trading happens on Sundays. Uh, it's just going to go 365 days into the future. And in order to prevent having different dates in the two values that we want, or in the two data sets that we want to plot, we're going to now limit the um, the instances to the days that we actually care about. So we're going to say predictions, uh, predictions ds has to be in, so is in, and we're going to pass here unknown underscore data ds. Basically, um, here we took the last 90 days and we still have the, da uh, the, the dates in here. So if we open a new cell, I can print here unknown data. And here we have these dates and only those dates are relevant. If a date does not occur here, we're going to remove it now from the data. We're not going to care about this, which is why we do pred equals predictions, where the date is actually also occurring in unknown data. That is the idea here. And we're now going to say plt plot pandas to underscore date time. And we're going to just go with the unknown data data. And we're going to say, we're going to plot the unknown data y value, we're going to give this a label actual, and we're going to copy this now. <clears throat> we're going to use the same dates because they should be the same. And then we're going to say instead of plotting the unknown data, we need to close this here. Instead of plotting the unknown data, we're going to plot the prediction, we're going to plot y hat. So what's the problem here was not closed. Okay, we need one more at the end here. Or do we we have pandas date time? What does it mean? It's not closed. It should be closed. Why is it not closed? Let's see if it works. Uh, because I'm closing. Oh, this is why we had a square bracket missing because it's here now. Okay, this should work now. There you go. And you can see maybe we want to add a legend here as well. PLT legend. Uh, this is not actual, this is the prediction. But you can see now that the prediction is this this orange line here. And this is what the stock price actually was. So it's not quite correct, right? So you can see that it actually didn't work. This might look different for different stocks, this might look different for different time frames with different input data and all that. 
Um, but you can see that just looking at this might be a little bit misleading because of course when it knows the data, the prediction is going to be quite accurate. If it doesn't know the data, the prediction is no longer quite accurate. So you can see the prediction was actually this, but the actual data was actually this, or sorry, actually, where is this? Uh, where did we start the prediction here? May 25, here. So the actual movement is this year, so the, the black dots. Um, yeah, you can see that there's a difference, but it's not, yeah, I mean, the trend is kind of correct, kind of up, kind of down, and yeah, I don't know. It's not really a good prediction, but um, yeah, you can do that with different stocks, you can do that with different time frames, with different input data, with uh, different amount of days that you want to predict into the future. Of course, if you don't show enough data to the model, you're going to get... Uh, Worse results, if you show a lot of data to the model and you just want to predict 10 days, you're going to get better results. But yeah, this is how you do stock price prediction, how you attempt stock price prediction using FP Profit in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and...